Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this short video, I'm going to talk you through a new free tool which exists on our website. It's called Electrify. We collaborated with the Road Two Spoons who created this tool to help you to estimate how much electricity you'll be using in your off-grid van conversion. So let's take a look at how it works. So starting on the homepage of our website, you head to the self-build uh, drop-down menu and there's the Electrify tab. Once you click on that, it will take you through to the tool. You can see a little bit of background in the text here. If you're interested in following the Row 2 Spoons on Instagram, just follow this link. And there's also a link to their blog page, which is here. Really interesting couple who are currently traveling around in one of our previous van conversions called Biggie Small. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out our van tour of that build, which is in the description below. So as you can see, the actual tool itself breaks down all the different electrical components that you'll have inside your van conversion. The first section is, is regarded as lighting and you simply choose different items that you want to have in your conversion and click add. So we're going to have LED spotlights, touch spotlights by the kitchen unit and two LED reading lights. In terms of appliances, we'll go for a 50 litre compressor fridge, a roof fan, a Truma Combi heater, a water pump, uh, oven igniter, and you also have an option to add a custom appliance, which is a really good feature. So if you want something that isn't listed into these presets, you can always add a custom appliance. So we'll do that as well. Other things we'll need is a heat control panel, a solenoid for the LPG to switch that on and off, a water level gauge, a couple of USB sockets. Uh, we'll go for a hair dryer. Um, and then in terms of the charging, I'm just going to start off by putting in some solar panels. Um, we will obviously look to install a mains hookup or a DC, DC charger at a later date. But for this uh, reading, if we start with the solar panels, we can work out um, whether our van is fully off grid 12 months of the year or whether we need to have supplementary charging from an alternator or from a mains hookup. What you then do is each of the appliances has got this slider bar where you can determine how many hours of the day you want to have each appliance on for. So for the LED spotlights, we'll have them on, say, roughly six hours a day, and we're going to have four of those in total. The touch spotlights for the kitchen unit, we'll probably be using them when we're cooking or doing food prep. So we'll say we'll have them on two hours a day, and we're going to have two of those. LED reading lights, we want two of those for when we're in bed and one hour per day. The compressor fridge will have it 24 hours, so it's constantly running. Uh, and this is already calibrated so that um, the compressor fridge runs for about 30% of the time on average. So the 24 hours a day will, will basically compensate for that, um, for that time. The roof fan will say one of them for an hour. LPG heater, if we're going to have our heating on throughout the night, uh, we'll say eight hours. Water pump, if we're going to have showers, probably 30 minutes a day. And the heat control panel, we'll have on all the time. LPG, we'll have that on when we're using the gas appliances, so again, eight hours. Uh, the water level gauge, we'll have on at 24 hours a day. Uh, no, we won't. We'll have it maybe a few hours just to check it. USB sockets, probably four hours of charging. And we'll have two of those. Hair dryer, just 10, 15 minutes a day. Uh, this is a really heavy demand of electrical usage, so 1,000 watts. Um, it's going to be a big draw on your batteries. Um, if you have a more powerful hair dryer, then obviously... You can add it as a custom appliance and then um, that will all be customizable. So in terms of the charging systems, we've got 100 watts of solar. So let's say we've got 400 watts of panels on the roof. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, we've got 400 watts, so we'll change the quantity to four. And hours of sunlight will go for six hours, which is sort of a... Uh, an average amount of uh, sunlight hours during the UK um, but again this is quite um, dependent on obviously your, your location uh, what time of year it is so um, you can get data off the internet um, to say how much 
sunlight hours there's going to be in a certain region at a particular period of the year um, but we'll go for six at the moment so in terms of the custom appliance obviously depending on what you're going to be using uh, you could have a TV that's 12 volts uh, and then you can work out what the wattage is so maybe 20 watts and then you want to have the TV on for one hour and there's one of them so then that's added and then what you get at the bottom here is your daily power output and your daily power input so your power output is the current draw from all of your electrical appliances and the, the duration of time that they're going to be running for in a 20, 24 hour period and the daily power input is based on your charging system. So for this example, we've used a 400 watts of solar with six hours of daylight um, in a 24 hour period. That would be a roughly a 1200 watt hour um, input, which equates to 100 amp hours. And what you're aiming for is you're aiming to, if you want a fully off grid system, you want to have your amp hours um, uh, around the same amount as your uh, daily demand. So your, your power out it's the same as your power in so that essentially your batteries are being fully charged just by the sun um, if this figure of the daily power out was higher than your daily power in then you'd need to have some supplementary charging whether that's your vehicle alternator so you might need to drive for one or two hours per day to be able to maintain that off-grid capability um, or you can use a, a mains charger with a hookup to make sure that you um, have infinite lifespan in your vans so desired battery capacity so we have two types here the agm lead acid batteries and the lithium batteries uh, with an agm battery you're going to want to have depth of discharge no no more than 50 percent uh, just to prevent damage from sulfation and other kinds of things uh, with a lithium battery you're going to get more uh, capacity um, for the same sort of amp power um, so you can have a depth of discharge up to about 95 percent without any um, long-term damage and what we can see is based on this setup, the day's usage uh, would be infinite. So you would be fully off grid with 400 uh, watts of solar uh, and those, those daily uh, usage calculations there. I'll just show you what it would look like if these were a bit different. So if you were gonna use your hair dryer, say for half an hour per day, it's gonna increase the daily power out to 117 amps and powers uh, your daily power in stayed the same and what you can see here is just the difference in terms of battery setup so if you've got a lithium setup you'll probably get about five and a half days worth of usage without um, then needing to go to a, a hookup or your alternator charger but with an AGM battery you're going to have that sort of halved so and just under three days worth of usage so um, underneath we've got some considerations to, to read through uh, and a bit more information on sort of uh, the tool itself so in summary it's a really important tool um, to utilize um, so that you can sort of calculate your electrical setup the solar panels that you need the battery type and size that you need uh, to achieve an off-grid uh, capable van um, so yeah feel free to uh, check it out and hopefully it helps you guys with your own van conversions. If you found this video useful, then leave us a comment below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel to get more van life conversions content. Let us know if there are any other useful tools that you would like us to create and we'll have a go at doing it. So yeah, see you soon.